So it's the 15th, and if you're watching this video, either the trailer didn't come out or it did and I'm just adding this in for an extra cherry on top. Either way, let's get into the video. Just to be clear, the devs didn't explicitly say that anything was going to come out on the 15th. It was just something that the community said was going to happen because of the time frame that the devs set for themselves back in late July. But they did not give us a clear date, so they still have the entirety of October to tell us something or show something. And that's all I really have to say on that, so let's continue. So today we're going to be starting off with a video that was sent to me by a subscriber in my Discord. The person that made this video goes by a donut operator. Now, I don't know much about this guy aside from what people have told me. And what they tell me is that he was or is in some sort of law enforcement. And his content consists of him seeing footage of officers' chest or helmet cams. And he comments on them, or at least that's what I was told. Can't really say that I've actually watched his content, so I can't really say what he does. But people seem to hold him in high regard, so he seems pretty cool but anyways we're not really here to talk about him we're, we're here to really talk about what he said in a live stream so let's go ahead and play that for the upcoming game ready or not yeah uh supposedly i'm gonna be working with them to help out with the game so i'll let you guys know i think that this is quite literally the first time that i've seen void reach out to a youtuber and ask them for help if this is true i tried to get a confirmation from the guy that gives out the emails but he has yet to reply to me i'm still sitting here wondering what's he helping them out with i mean obviously he's going to be promoting the game in some way but because he has some sort of history with law enforcement i guess he's gonna like put his two cents in to particular moments in the game at least that's what it seems like to me but i thought that they had already had law enforcement working on the game with them so he could be a voice actor i don't know but that was interesting nonetheless all right so let's move on to the next one here which is gonna be reddit they changed up the way that the reddit looks and i really dislike the way that it looks so i guess i'm gonna have to do my own format so let's see how this goes. So we're going to be starting off with in SWAT 4, if you press the use key while aiming at the cuff suspect, the main character would say something funny. Will we have this feature in Ron? For example, in SWAT 4, pressing F on a cuff bad guy who has been reported to talk would make the main character go like, yeah, nice try, you lose. Is that supposed to be a reference to PewDiePie? You laugh, you lose. You, you India, you lose it. In response to what the suspect may have been saying, or something like, tell it to the judge. And pressing F on a cuff civilian who has already been reported would make the main character say, don't worry, we'll get you out of here. Or, sorry, just following procedure. My favorite one is where the sound's all disinterested, and he just like, yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. It was really meant to be a response to a civvy going, I didn't do anything wrong, etc, etc. It's a funny little thing. Will Ron have it? And Easy Street replies with, just to be clear, this was a feature that was added in the elite force mod oh i was the one that programmed that into the mod damn it damn it easy street why do you got it why do you got a raid on my parade all right well that was interesting let's move on to the next one up next we have units will there be a possibility of customizing your kit and rping a specific unit more specifically a vintage gear 80s fbi atf swat etc and the developer replies with ideally you'll be able to select new units in the future as per our post-release plans i'd be a fan of adding more classic vintage swat dudes that'd be awesome yeah i think that would be actually pretty cool just imagine like one of the swat characters from swat 4 coming into this game that'd be actually pretty cool all right moving on to the next one up next we have what are the types of movement mechanics we'll be seeing in ron i already know that we may not see vaulting being implemented and that jumping may be a thing as well but what about sprinting mechanics like stamina or possibly players being able to repel not trying to compare to siege edit forgot to mention if leaning will be possible as well will there also be deployables that affect movement like ladders i'd also like to know how far you guys are going with the movement capabilities this guy needs to read the faq which if anybody doesn't know, the FAQ is a bunch of questions that was asked by the community and it was answered by the devs themselves. So the answers to a majority of questions are in the FAQ. Just letting people know. The link is in the description. But the developer went ahead and, you know, decided to answer him. So let's see what he says. Vaulting will most likely be in. It's not in currently, but we're looking into it. You can lean quickly, lean dynamically. It increments from a standing position, etc. There's no sprint at this time, but that may evolve depending on requirements of our level going forward. The overall plan 
design is to give the player as much movement control as possible. No sprinting? Interesting. Later on in the comments, somebody says, Sprint wouldn't always be used, so that's a smart idea. Will aiming down sights have a focusing effect on iron sights? And the developer replies with, You can focus on ADS by holding shift. As I was taking the squad model. Later on in the comments, somebody says, On the topic of free look, any track IR support, especially for incremental leaning? And the developer replies with, there could be for free look, but probably not for incremental leaning, at least not from the get-go. Later on in the comments somebody says, I don't remember if anyone has said something about the mod support, but advanced track IR support might be a good idea for a community mod, since it's so niche. And the developer replies with, we've talked about mod support quite a few times, I believe. Definitely want to support mods. Later on in the comment section somebody asks, what about the different ducking heights shown on the website? And the developer replies with, that's a lean system in play, crouch, lean, key, down. Low crowds, same for any direction. Somebody else replies with, What's the interface for firing side transitions? Do transitions require a break-in stride movement? And the developer replies with, You can't fire ambidextrously yet. What the fuck does that mean? Able to use right and left hands equally well. Oh. Okay. Our technical animator really wants to do this, but obviously we've got stuff to look at first. Interesting. So, if I wanted to switch hands, I could do so, which is actually very useful um, when, when, depending on what corner you're trying to go after. Man, that was a lot of information on one little post. Well, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have Gameplay Downgrade. Is the game going to be a situation like Rainbow Six Siege where the gameplay trailer shows the game looking and playing great, but on release is drastically downgraded? And the developer replies with, We're not a company with decades of history and release games. We can't afford to lie. Now I've been saying that for a very long time now. You want to cut the trailer to be interesting and tight, of course, for the sake of public interest, but anything we show will happen in game. Yeah, I completely agree with these guys. I mean, I really hate that Siege did that. Like, they showed something off at E3 and it, looks, it looked completely different from what was in the final product. And like I said before, this is their one and only chance to make, you know, a mark on people to get people to come back and buy more. You know, this is their one and only shot, so yeah. Let's move on to the next one, which is arresting animation. When arresting subjects, will initiating the interaction lead into a full animation of your character placing the zip cuffs on the subject? Or will we be seeing the return to the swap form method, where once you initiate the cuffing interaction, a loading bar appears and the cuffs magically appear on the AI once the interaction is complete. I don't mind either way, but I feel like a full arrest animation would be a welcome evolution from what SWAT 4 had. Tanny Dev willing to respond, if you decided not having an animation, what was the reason for sticking with the SWAT 4 style? And the developer replies with, we're exploring it, you may see it at some point. And that's all there seems to be on this page, so let's move on. Up next we have telescopic ladders. Will the ladder spawn opened up at the beginning of the mission, at a selected location, or will you be able to equip them and put them down wherever you want them? And if you put them down, will you be able to pick them up? Like the ballistic shield? I haven't seen an answer for it at the FAQ. And the developer replies with, you can take the ladder from the SWAT truck, then have to carry that to wherever you want to use it. They can be collected and utilized as many times as you want. Cool. Later on in the comments somebody says, cool. With all the stuff that you guys are adding in, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Fish AI. And the developer replies with, Fish AI to advanced. Even later on, somebody in the comments says, That sounds cool as hell. Does all the special equipment, telescopic ladder, ballistic shield, etc., selected on pre mission menu spawn on the SWAT truck to be retrieved at the beginning of the mission? And the developer replies with, Yup. The person that made the original post says, Thank you for your reply. By the way, can you equip your gun while you have a ladder? And the developer replies with, Not while you're carrying it. It, all deployables occupy your arms, so you have to drop it to use your primary secondary. Exception being the shield, of course. However, if you mean shooting from the ladder, possibly. Very cool. Moving on. Up next we have, what are some scenario maps you want to see in Ron? I know the devs likely have a solid list of scenarios they plan to put out in the game, but what are some creative scenarios you would like to see in the game at some point, whether it be through mods or DLC? And a lot of people seem to have answered a bunch of missions that were from SWAT 3 or SWAT 4. Here's a list what somebody had posted in terms of uh, what types of scenarios are here and also what types of maps that they would like to see. Very interesting. And the developer replies to the people that posted stuff saying, we won't have any sort of in-game map editor. That takes a lot of time. However, Unreal Engine makes it very easy for the community to make their own maps. Interesting. Later on in the comments, somebody says, will we still get the game assets, such as spawn points for SWAT suspects, multiplayer suspects too, and civilians, stack points, move points, etc. And the developer replies with, I'm not entirely sure at this point, but I'd assume so. And that will about do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Got me. Let's go. Up next we have There's No Hurry. Hello. For a long time this subreddit mostly talks about when the trailer will drop. 
I get it. We all want to see the game, but I wanted to tell the devs that I don't care how long it takes, neither for the trailer, nowhere, for the release of the game. And I suspect a lot of people like me who don't really post here think that way too. I just want the game to be as good as possible, even if delays happen. Thank you for your time. Somebody in the comments says, I've stated before that it's not the delays which personally irk me, it's the dates being mentioned with even the smallest hint at being promised. It could take another year for all I care, but if they promise month after month that it's only weeks away, that's when I have a problem. I think that we, and I mean we, have learned a valuable lesson about promising dates. Now I think we deserve a trailer drop at 2359 9.30 for the lols, for all the things we put them through. And the developer applies with, definitely the case. While I think we do a fair bit right, this is one of those areas where there's a lot to learn. The nature of game development makes estimations very difficult. When we're certain, and I mean certain, there will be more info than you can shake a stick at. Also to be fair, most people have been waiting for more than a decade for something in the genre. I also suspect some weren't even born then. A little more time is really not going to hurt. Somebody replies to that saying, we want to give you money when the product comes out. And the more we learn about it, the more hype gets drummed up. Periods of silence aren't the greatest. Smaller updates are perfectly fine in the gap. And the developer replies with, small updates are fine, sure, but they take a lot of time and focus. In an ideal world, I'd love to be posting a lot of stuff, but it's really best left till we can release it in one go. And that about do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Up next we have, will we still get the these nods and it shows a picture of one of the nods from the original uh, ready or not pictures that's on the website it should be on the screen for you guys to see and the developer replies with not for SWAT later on in the comments somebody says are the nods for SWAT going to be two tubes and the developer replies with yes somebody replies to that saying so there will be other CTUs or HRTs and the developer replies with only the extra CTU at launch after that we'll add more interesting Moving on. Up next we have post-launch multiplayer. I know multiplayer PvP isn't exactly the biggest priority of the game, and that it'll be fairly simple, i.e. TDM, etc. But will there be further work on multiplayer in terms of game modes, or just refining it, etc. after release? And the developer replies with, of course! We've got a few different modes too, not just TDM, as well as having planned a party mode with some pretty cool modifiers for people to mess with. Interesting, let's move on. Up next we have, is this game vaporware? As in, it does not actually exist. All we have is a rendered revival trailer, a handful of 25 second or shorter of work in progress in-game footage from the YouTube channel, all of which can be pre-rendered as well, and a dozen or more pieces of artwork. On top of that, they were planning on releasing the gameplay trailer months ago, and now there has been no update of any kind for months. Besides, the soon guys, or we are working on it, at best the devs give you a vague answer, if they even care enough to give you an answer, about anything related to use actually seeing anything about the game, which is basically maybe Soon, maybe not soon. This game could just be one massive tease that does not even exist. I don't know where people keep getting this assumption from, because I mean, what is the motive here? Because it's not like we gave them any Kickstarter money. Like, if it's just a practical joke, then why are they leading us on like this? Anyways, the dev says, I appreciate your concern. It all just boils down to the game. Is best showed when it's ready. Every day that goes by, it gets further and further along. Development hasn't stagnated and has in fact picked up. Lack of updates definitely don't show that, but it's only because the focus is purely on game and not on PR. Until there is substantial content to show otherwise, we just have more people who want to know about the game. But the exact same discussion going on, aka where's the gameplay, and nothing changes anyway. Very interesting. Alright, well, moving on. Up next we have Lethal Ram? Will the battering ram be lethal-like? Can you hit someone and damage them, or breach a door and damage someone on the other side? And the developer replies with, yep. Oh man, that's awesome. I can't wait to fucking mail the shit out of someone. Wait, I thought there was no melee in this game. You lied to me, devs. You lied to me. Ugh. Ugh, I'm out of here. Well, I just came back to finish up the video, so uh, let's talk about the next one. DLC operators? Which operators would you like to see in a DLC later? Devs in the wrong community. I know that the game didn't even get out on Steam yet, and I don't mean as a suggestion or anything like that, just as a fun discussion. Personally, I would love to see a tactical police force that's usually not mentioned in video games, films, etc. Like the Irish Euro, or for example, the Hungarian Tech? And the developer applies with lots of plans for future police forces to be implemented. Somebody in the comments says, if you are doing DLCs, do do it like the old school expansion for example AoE and AoE Rise Son of Rome, almost different games. And the developer replies with, that's the 
the plan for expansions. And that ought to do it for this, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have, the game is dead and it's not even out yet. And the developer replies with, says who? Moving on. Up next we have, anyone know if the battering ram can open up doors in one hit? The title says it for the most part. Also, are there doors that are made of different materials? Like for instance, metal doors are less susceptible to rams or something like that. And the developers reply with, doors can be given an integrity, which will affect how resilient they are. But usually the ram will knock the door open once broken in. And that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. I have a question. Hello. I was thinking about truck setup phase. When you go into a mission and you see your stuff is not adapted to the situation, can you go back to the truck and make some changes? Thanks. And the developer replies with, Hello, that's not a feature currently. Players will have enough information at the start of the mission in their planning phase so it shouldn't be an issue. The person that posted this post says, Thanks for the answer. Question please. I know it's not Siege, but is Terrace enabled to destroy your drones and you can't get some important information? And the developer replies with, Drones can be destroyed or just damaged. Interesting. So so the drone can actually survive if it takes a hit. Did not know that. Later on in the comment section, somebody says, but will we have situations where information is limited, very limited or minimal? And the developer applies with, Correct, but you're going to have to make do with the information provided. You won't be able to select a shield, then go back to the truck and select the ladder instead, unless you pick both in the planning phase. Interesting. All right, moving on. In this next one, we already talked about this, but I might as well just, you know, say it anyway. Disable compass on screen? Hi all, I'm 100% hyped for this game to come, but something worried me a bit. Will the compass always be displayed on the screen? Will there be an option to disable it or a key to show up for a limited time? Like press T to show up for like three seconds? And the developer replies with, you can hide the compass in the options menu. You. All right, moving on to the next one. Up next we have, why October 15th? Somebody in the comments says, they did say no later than three months, but then Gunter, but then Grunter, I've been saying his name wrong the entire time, says, people have extrapolated that based on replies in the AMA. However, it's really just a case of game development taking longer than anticipated as usual and not having as much experience with estimated dates, which has improved dramatically. Okay. Interesting. Moving on. Up next we have Mags and Ammo Question Suggestion. If a player runs out of ammo, I have seen in the FAQ that you will be able to purchase a rearm. And I think that is a good thing to do, but I think it would be cool if you could ask a teammate for a mag. And if he has a spare mag, he will toss it to you. Just something I thought would be cool to see. But I love how the game is looking. And I can't wait for the gameplay trailer to see some gameplay. Keep up the good work. Somebody in the comments says, honestly, except if you start with only two mags or you shoot full auto, I don't see how you can be out of ammo but in the case that you are i agree with you somebody replies to that saying that is a big if my thoughts are that if you get to choose how much ammo you want to carry it affects how much other equipment you can carry and that could lead to one guy taking on a support role as in choosing tactical gear over ammo and then have one teammate that focuses on carrying more ammo at the expense of less tactical gear and the developer replies with you can load up on magazines but you can't share them currently the fault is four mags but you can go up to 10 in some weapons <laughs> Yeah, back in Swap 4, I used to have 10 mags for some reason. Like, the game would start me out with it, and I wouldn't even realize. Somebody replies to Gunter saying, Also, just a quick few. How does the ammo get to you when you buy it? Or do you have to head back out to the truck? Can you refill supplies at the spawn during a mission? And the developer replies with, You load up pre-deployment, then spawn with ammunition in your plate carrier. Cool, cool, cool. And that's all we have for this one. Let's move on. Up next we have, Since this is an old pick, do we assume that there will no longer be ballistic face masks like this? Or will it still be in the customization options and then it shows this picture and the developer replies with yeah it's still an option for the player somebody replies to that saying i don't know of any western law enforcement agencies that use those masks kind of immersion breaking in my opinion but i guess it is what it is and the developer replies with none of the mpl but we do have that too i've touched on this in the past we've never been about limiting ourselves to what current agencies use since that's a strange bar on our creative freedom interesting all right all right pretty cool let's move on to the next one up next we have how exactly will negotiators function in the game. I've read the FAQ and I know that negotiators will reduce the number of hostages and that it's one of the most expensive options, whatever that means. My question is whether we will physically see a release of hostages, the negotiator, the exchange between suspects, and the negotiator, etc. Or whether it's just a pre-made event, we select and that there are less hostages by default at the beginning of the mission when we spawn in. Somebody in the comments says, pre-made event, I think. And the developer replies with, Correct. Currently, it's a pre-made event. Interesting. Moving on. Possibly two months, but no more than three. Oh yeah? We'll see about that. And the developer replies with a GIF. It shows a picture of Airplane and he's trying his 
damnedest to get this over with. Later on in the comments, somebody says, does this mean that you're close? And the developer replies with, yeah. So this might be a reason why they're not coming out and saying, hey, we're we're gonna we're not gonna need some time. This, they might actually be close to finishing either the trailer or whatever. So ho that's what I'm hoping. So let's move on to the next one. Up next we have, trailer won't be coming this month or anytime soon. You can tell how quiet the devs are. Dead giveaway. Somebody in the comments says, in terms of communication, they still have a lot to learn in my opinion. I don't think that people will riot if they announced another delay, but they just don't say anything. Even a public statement. Hey, we need more time. It may take a couple of months, would suffice, but no. As of now, they just ignore it or make a joke out of it. And the developer responds with a very long statement saying, I thought I might touch on that date and current situation. Since the initial AMA, we went through a significant period of growth, both structurally and otherwise, which led to us assessing our internal workflows and improving them to, ironically, make us work faster as a group. Shortly after this, we were approached by a few companies who wanted to have some discussions with us regarding ready or not. This took away from the trailer as we had to put most of our focus into that for around a month and a half. Wow, man. So a month and a half has gone by without them actually working on the game. Interesting. Promptly, we were flying off again, away from our workstations for a time, for some exciting yet exhausting discussions. Returning, we applied a massive amount of extra polish to our gameplay and tweaking to the system in RON to both look better and feel better. This, not surprisingly, takes up a lot of time. To coincide with this, there was some shifting of goalposts regarding the trailer and what we wanted to show. Some of the features in the game hadn't been polished and thus were put to the side. After some assessing, we decided to take a little more time to polish those features off to be ready for the showcasing instead of of leaving some cool stuff out. Naturally, this trailer is very important and we want to get it right as best as we can. We won't be announcing or estimating any more dates until we're certain about the release. Just know that we're not wasting time. The team is built up of a dedicated group of six sadistic perfectionists who have a need to make sure everything is 10 out of 10. If you're wondering if this level of low volume communications will continue after pre-order, the answer is of course, no. There will be a much higher level of contact and information flow at that stage. Currently, we decided to keep ourselves in eat, sleep, work mode because of the lack of financial accountability. Do not misconstrue the dedication to release the best game we possibly can with unprofessionalism because ultimately, that's all we want to do. Wow, that's... The reason why that they uh, delayed the trailer was because they were gone for about a month and a half. So that's a whole month and a half of work down the drain right there. Wow. Well, at least they finally told us why, you know, they delayed it. All right, well, I don't think there's anything else here, so I'm gonna, um, wait. Further down in the comment section, somebody says, as someone working in a AAA and seeing his work trapped in an infinite loop of do that again in way X or Y because of management doesn't want to piss off the investors, please be careful on what companies you discuss Ron with, if possible, publishers or anything related. Thank you for the update though. And the developer applies with, of course, we're very apprehensive. Our vision is not tainted. Wow, interesting. All right, moving on. All right, come on, Dura. You're no, we're almost near the finish line. Come on. Yeah. You're almost near the finish line. I've only been working on this since 3 in the morning, and it's 6, it's almost 7 p.m. <laughs> Up next we have gun aiming. While playing games like Rainbow Six Vegas 2 and SWAT 4, I hated it when I would point my gun at my teammate while stacked at a door and whatnot. It doesn't seem to be realistic. Aiming your guns at your mates while they're having their guns down while stacked? Will there be a key to lower your guns like an arma or at least rest it? And the developer applies with, currently, it auto lowers on teammates unless ADS. I've been pushing for us to have an extra key for those total immersion players to toggle lowering manually. Somebody else says, God, yes. Essentially a safety, but also aesthetic, right? And the developer replies with, yeah. Later on in the comments, somebody says, it'd be nice to have some automated mechanic to prevent friendly fire when firing immediately next to a teammate IRL. This is safer than firing past the teammate from a distance. In games, it's exactly the opposite because the muzzle doesn't get pushed aside when teammate jerks suddenly using just eight movement directions. I'm sure you have bigger fish to fry, just a thought. And the developer replies with, it's very unlikely you'll be able to TK with our system, unless aiming of course, but we don't want to neutralize all player control. Interesting. And that ought to do it for this. Alright, moving on to the last one, which is Ballistic Shields Ratings. And it says, Looking through the FAQ, I see that there will be Ballistic Shields, but what Ballistic Rating will they be? Most current shields are rated as Ninja? I don't know if I'm saying that right. N-I-J, N-I-J, 3-A, these are Roman numerals, right? I think that's what's supposed to be, the N-2 or N-3. Are those supposed to be roman numerals the nij or the n1j 3a or double ia or nij and 3 i have no idea if the 
it. I don't know. Will the planning phase at the beginning of the mission give us an idea of what caliber hostiles will be using? Obviously, you don't want to be pushing through a doorway with a 3A rated shield if they are firing 762 by 39 millimeter rounds at you. That would end the mission very quickly. And the developer replies with, currently the shields are 3A, one mounted with a light. You can use your sidearm to fire around them at any time. Ideally, in the future, there will be another shield that is a lot heavier, but we don't have that currently. The players are funded enough, they can unlock a second shield to use in ops. We're still experimenting with how they'll fare against weapons. Interesting. Somebody replies to that saying, if players are funded enough, they can unlock a second shield to use in ops. If players are funded enough, and the developer applies with void coins. Jokes aside, currently as you progress, your team's fundings go up. So basically what's happening is that if anybody's ever played Insurgency Sandstorm, anytime that you play through a mission, it gives you like coins and you use those coins to eventually, you know, unlock a bunch of like cosmetic stuff. That's basically what he's talking about. I don't want to, you know, get people mixed up with like, you know, loot boxes and microtransactions and all that shit. Yeah, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about unlocking credits as you go through the game and then getting, you know, stuff to buy things with like a shield or, or or a, a breaching thing or a ladder or whatever. That's basically what he means, I think. Somebody replies to that saying, oh damn, that's cool. So later you could replay old missions with more funding to try and do better. And the developer replies with, that's the plan. And that is the end of our video. I wanna thank everybody for coming out to watch. This took a very long time to do. I am never going to say that I'm gonna do a video on a specific date, especially if it's not, you know, uh, like literally the day before, cause I was working on this the entire day. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I'll catch you in the next one. I'm going to go take a nap now.